Let's get started with the supplies. First of all, you will need to have an inkjet printer that uses pigment-based inks, not toner type cartridges, but it needs to be a pigment-based ink. So you, what you'll need to do is check with your manufacturer to make sure that your printer uses that kind of ink. So we have here um, June Taylor sewn-in color fast fabric sheets for inkjet printers. Pre-done for you, all ready to go, because it is rather stiff like canvas is, but it's, um, it's a finer and a little bit smoother surface to it. Um, I prefer Jacquard inkjet fabric sheets um, because they have a nice soft hand to them. You can tell even just taking them with the paper still on them and see how this holds out straight, <laughs> like uh, almost like cardboard. It's very stiff, but this drapes nicely. It drapes even better once it's got the paper peeled off. But it has a really fine weave also on a smooth surface, so it, it won't look like a cheap fabric when you put it into your quilts. Um, most of these come with also a list of instructions of how to, do, to use their product. However, I found a system that I like, and so that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, the Dharma Trading Company has this great pack that I just thought was wonderful. It's 12 sheets of inkjet printer fabric, and each one's different. There are six cottons and six silks. The cottons are everything from sateen to batiste. It even has a canvas that you can use to print your photos on too. The silks include chiffon, crepe de chine, satin, organza, charmeuse. So it's a nice variety pack. Um, and I've, I've had good luck with these two. They work really well. What you need to know though on any of these is once you have printed, peeled the paper, heat set them, that they will shrink slightly. The darn on the silk tends to shrink only lengthwise about three eighths of an inch, uh, but the width will stay eight and a half. June Taylor and Jacquard tend to shrink a quarter inch each direction, or you can make your own inkjet fabric sheets. What you need is your plain piece of fabric, and I chose this yellow just because it was in the cover, and yeah, it was just there and not being used. So what you do is just take um, a piece of freezer paper that's just a little bit larger than your um, eight and a half by 11. You want a little bit larger because you want to be able to trim. You want all those edges nice and neat with no um, little frays sticking out. And I'll take a break here a second and I'll press that freezer paper onto there. On this, you'll make sure that your freezer paper is firmly adhered all the way around the edges. Now I do strew the eight and a half by 11 onto this piece of freezer paper just to make sure that I, I had it big enough. And then of course you can see the fabric sticks out around the edges. And so that when I go to cut, I have plenty of room to trim off and that the edge of the paper and the edge of the fabric are gonna be in the same place. So then you can just take your straight edge and your ruler. Um, you want to have this on as close to the straight grain as you can for the practical purpose of not having little frays hanging off because those could get caught in your machine. And then you have to clean out the jam and then that piece might not be usable to print with once it's gone through and tangled in, tangled in the printer. So I just turn this off. Kind of helps having it already marked down there because then I just have to line up the ruler with the, the marks. It's on there nice and firm and that should go through the printer just fine. I also want to caution you to use this at your own risk. I don't know what it will do to your printer. I know I have tried it in my old black and white a toner cartridge printer and it went through fine. I've tried it in my color printer and it's worked there fine. I also tried it on our large format 13 by 19 inch printer and it went through there also quite well. So let's go to the printer and see how this comes out. Okay, I'm at my printer again. Let's load up this freezer paper sheet of fabric that we made and see how it prints. Of course, I'm putting it face down because that's what my printer says to do. 
sliding it all the way forward like you normally would with the paper, but only the one sheet in there. That way it won't accidentally grab two sheets of paper or something. I just do the one sheet at a time seems to work the best. Okay, I'm going to select a photograph on my computer. I'm just going to say to fit it onto a, an 8x10 onto the fabric and we'll see how it comes out with a lake picture on yellow fabric. <laughs> it ought to be interesting. I'll go ahead um, and double check in that it's on best quality. It's a go. Color with a really good quality does take a few seconds extra to print. Um, mainly because it's printing so densely and not leaving spaces. If it was just words, I'd spit it out pretty fast, but it takes a little longer with the picture. Color photo. Yeah, it's very interesting. A uh, picture of Lake Tahoe on my computer screen. It is very blue, and this is quite a bit yellower. So yeah, it makes it kind of look old-fashioned. Sheets. Let's get down to printing a quilt label. What I usually do is I just open up my word processing program, which for me is Pages because I'm on a Mac. You can do Word on a PC, whatever you've got. Uh, you can pick a plain sheet, vertical or horizontal, and just start there. I have one already made up for quilt labels, so I'm just going to open that one. And I, I made this label quite a few years back. And you see it was for the old tree quilt. And now up here, I'm going to change the name because I am starting a new one. That one's a template, and this is going to be called Sample. So I am making a quilt for my niece, so I'll just go ahead and make the label right here. Ah, I can spell correctly, too. And now I'm going to change my name here, too, because she knows me as Aunt Candy. Okay, and then, of course, it's not that pattern. And so I'm going to take that part out just by selecting it and deleting it. And finished in March of 2020, because I'm right now in the process of quilting it. So that's all very good. And then I can just save that, which I did just now. I am going to drag a, a photo into it. So the easiest way to do that is to pull up my photos and pick something interesting. And what I'm going to use is a picture of my initials. I'll just um, drag that in here. What I did is just add a text box, um, took my photo, dragged it into that text box. Then it allows me to pos position it, size it. If I click right in the middle, it lets me crop it so I can make it a little taller, a little narrower, and then reposition it so it's nice and neat. Click done, and then I can drag it to where I want it. So depending on where I drag it, it's to where it'll show up on the label. Yeah, so kind of like it over there. Um, that's the finished label. Then my printer is on. What we do on printing is always to do a practice run on paper first. So I do have paper in my printer, a regular eight and a half by 11 white paper. And then I'm going to take the print option and look at it here. Looks like it's okay. It might need a little bit more room at the top just for, you know, enough material to turn under the edge to trim off for whatever shape. In that case, I would just cancel it. I would go back here to the very top of the document and then just hit return a couple times and and move it down and of course the picture you can just drag down so that gives me a little bit more room i'll save that again and then go back to the print mode i have my settings saved for color one-sided so that's easy so you'll want color you'll want one-sided you'll want to also select your best quality every time because um, sometimes on the normal quality color photos will come out with lines through it or just not really bold color like you want. Then I'm just going to go ahead and print and when that comes out I'll be able to determine whether I like the color and everything on it. Oh yeah let's go ahead and correct the year on this too and make it 2021 <laughs> and make it correct and then I'll go ahead and print it. Again color, one-sided, and 
best quality. That'll get you the best label. And remember, if you ever print on the wrong side and you end up printing the label on the paper side, just go ahead and turn it over and print again. It'll be fine. There's the finished and correct version of the label with this year's date. Okay, so make sure you've saved your file. Then we'll go to peeling the paper off, pressing it with hot iron, rinsing it, and pressing it once again. Let's go ahead and peel the paper off. First, I'm going to peel the paper off of the silk photo on fabric. And what I like to do is to loosen one edge completely before pulling down the length. Now, this is the silk. It's very lightweight silk. I'm trying not to stretch it out of shape as I peel it off. You can see the fabric is so lightweight that it actually left some of the um, ink on the paper. Then I have a press cloth that I am going to put over it. And it may look not the world's most beautiful press cloth. It's been through a lot. And then I'm going to iron that for about a full minute, making sure I get it nicely pressed. The first press I'm doing with the press cloth, just in case there's any ink that might be loose or extra, and it can come on, but I'm not getting any marks here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that to the wrong side and press directly on the fabric. And this is on the silk setting of the iron so that it doesn't damage the fabric. With cotton, I can just like heat it up to the hottest and it's fine, but um, gotta be more gentle with it silk, but I do want that ink to be set into the fabric. And that is pressed. So after that is pressed, I can go ahead and heat up the iron again. This is the Jacquard cotton inkjet printing fabric. I'm just going to go this way. It's an odd piece of paper. Um, I'm going to just go across this way. It actually peels a lot easier because there's a little bit more um, body to the fabric, but you'll see it has a nice hand to it, a nice draped soft feel, which is really great um, when you put it into a quilt because it's not going to make a stiff spot. It'll be nice, just like another layer of lightweight quilting fabric, but it is tightly woven, so you don't have to worry about it looking cheap or shrinking a whole bunch or anything. So those are both pressed, and go to get some water, and I'm going to rinse these. I'm going to put my quilt label in a bath here. And I see no ink running around. It looks fine. Looks great. And so, yeah, I'm scrunching it up. Yeah, I'm messing up my label. Also getting some paper towels. Let's go ahead and straighten it out again. Put it between the paper towels, pat it dry. Okay, still don't see any signs of ink coming off. Now I'll just take my iron and finish ironing that dry. Make sure you get that good and hot. It just seems to set the ink really well and it'll stay really good for a long time. I have heard rumors of people having their, um, their pictures they printed on fabric just disappearing, but I think there's something in the process they missed. Let's get the bath back here and do our silk. I do see a little bit of color coming out of this, but Dharma does say that their silk and cotton is not color fast, but got just a little bit of color out of there. I've had real good results with my photos on fabric that I have washed the quilt it was a little bit um, dull to start with, but it uh, it washed, faded ever so slightly, but I put it on a regular wash cycle, regular detergent, just to see what would happen, and it barely faded. That's the one I'm going to show you later. <clears throat> so it does work here. So I'm going to go ahead and put the press cloth over this, make sure I don't scorch it, and iron that dry. Um, you don't want to scorch it by leaving it in one place for the whole minute. 
keep moving it around, it'll, uh, it'll not burn that way. I'm going to do it on the wrong side, directly on the fabric too. Every little bit of ink that can get set in there permanently, the better. So this one leaches tiny bit of ink when it's washed. If you're going to wash this silk photo and, um, in cold wash, ungentle, or hand wash, I would suggest that you do use a color catcher if it's being washed with anything else. This system seems to make really good color pass pictures for me, and I've really enjoyed it. So this is the whole process, and now it's ready to be sewn into your projects. So let me show you a couple of things that I've made. One of the labels that I've made uh, for my quilt based on a book that I like. So this has the whole copyright permission for this quilt on the label. I just made my quilt label as usual with my information and then copied the email information from Penguin Random House so that I have the permission to use the Winnie the Pooh picture on the front. Another thing I've used this process for is these photos that I put in my anniversary quilt a couple of years ago. Um, I used the June Taylor fabric printing sheets for this one and they are you know, pretty stiff but this is mostly a showpiece i mostly just leave it hanging on this rack in my living room the photos themselves were a little bit faded looking to start with because of the nature of them being mostly older photographs especially the one in the, the center this one was from our anniversary and you can see i printed another piece fabric with the date of our anniversary on it and um and then i hand sewed it on there well and that's why i know that it's not fun to hand sew this because it is very stiff and the needle feels like it's punching through cardboard every time you go to sew through it <laughs> so that's something you want to machine sew on before you're doing your quilting and stuff um so each of these photos you can see there is a, a slight bit of fading but um, like I said, I just threw this in the washing machine on, I, I believe, just a permanent press cycle with regular detergent. It's been over two years ago that I made it, and I haven't lost my pictures. I think that just following this procedure of the um, heat setting, rinsing to make sure that it's not going to bleed ink, and then heat setting again just does the job of getting that ink to stay where it should be. It was nice talking with you today. Hope this helps you with all your projects in the future. If you like this video, leave a comment or subscribe with the button below. See you later.